Yeah, come and join us in Sequoia Living REI, where we only talk about relevant topics, you know, things that are important, things that help you grow, things that help you elevate. Come and join us. Yeah. Yeah. We have a quality conversations with us and now. Yeah, yeah, we having quality conversations with SNL. Having quality conversations with SNL. Having quality conversations with SNL. Yeah, having quality conversations with SNL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, having quality conversations with SNL. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we having quality conversations with SNL. Having quality conversations with SNL. Yeah. What's Everyone. up, everybody? What's up? This is Conversation with SNL. Yep, I'm Seth. I'm Lashia. And together, we, we make Sequoia, Sequoia Living in REI. REI. Yes. Let's go. Let's get it, people. Today, we are joined by a very special guest. Benny is a real estate broker with over 28 years of experience in residential, commercial, and international real estate sales. He was the president of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers for the Hampton Roads chapter for 10 years. Before his career in real estate, he served in the United States Army for 22 years and earned a Bachelor of Science degree from Southern Illinois University. Benny is certified as a housing counselor and a certified first-time home buyer trainer with the Virginia Housing Development Authority. He works with home buyers and sellers to assist them with their real estate needs and provides pre foreclosure counseling to those who are in need of specialized assistance. As a loss mitigator, he has developed procedures and processes on how to counsel sellers in a pre foreclosure status and negotiate workout plans and or short sales agreements with their mortgage companies. Benny has worked across the country to help people save their homes from foreclosure. Benny's core values are honesty, integrity, faith, determination, and love, which he applies to his personal and professional life. His expertise, knowledge, and guidance have helped numerous clients across the country, making him equipped with the vital skills needed to succeed in the real estate industry today. With his university outlook on the real estate industry and the client's needs overall, he is a vital resource to the real estate community. People, uh, Benny, Benny, people. Up, how you doing? Good morning, Benny. Yes. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Yep. Going great. Yep, yep. All right, we got a lot to learn today, people. Yes, yes. So listen up, listen close. Yes. Know, take out your pen and pad. Listen up, this man is gonna drop some jewels. Yes. All right, so we're gonna get into it like this. So what made, motivated you to pursue a career in real estate after serving in the army for 22 years? And how did your military experience shape your approach to real estate? Uh, that's a great question, Seth. And I always uh, look back at uh, my tenure in the military and how I got involved in real estate. And uh, back in the mid '80s, um, uh, I was looking, uh, watching me and the family, a television show by Phil Donahue, and they was talking about how to buy a house with no money down, and that uh, piqued my interest very much. So I was in Tacoma, Washington at that time in the mid '80s, and um, I picked up the phone, called the real estate company, and said, "Hey." I want to inquire, uh, find out some information, how to purchase a home with no money down. And the young man or the gentleman on the other end of the phone said, uh, are you looking at that Phil Donahue show? I said, yes, <laughs> sir, I am. I was very, very excited. So he gave me some houses to drive by, take a look at, said, these properties right here may uh, fit your need in reference to buying a house with no money down. And uh, basically, uh, they were not in very good, desirable areas. I wouldn't want my family to live in those areas. So I kind of walked away kind of discouraged after looking at about five to ten homes for me and the family uh, Mm. over a couple of days. 
So I kind of put that on the back burner because I said this must be not true, not real. But uh, I had a, me and the family was buying some insurance, some life insurance. And uh, the guy uh, seen that I had some uh, homes on my table. I said, yes, we're trying to find a home, but we can't get nobody to help us in reference to what we're looking for. So he said, well, maybe I have an agent for you. I have her to give you a call and uh, see how she can help you. And uh, she did. She called. She came to our house, asked us a lot of questions. She had seen at that time we had two very young children. And uh, she said, well, uh, y'all ready to go look for a house? I said, how are we going to look for a house? Because the other gentleman told me that uh, basically there was no houses to buy with no money down. And she kind of chuckled and grinned. And she said, well, I know you have $100 in your pocket. I said, oh, yeah, that's nothing. I have $100. She said, well, let's go shopping. We're going to find a house. And uh, that's kind of how the process got rolling. And I did mm. buy a house, a VA, with a VA loan, $100 down in Tacoma, Washington. So the story is true. It is yeah. accurate. And from that moment, I kind of got interested in real estate. And I tell the story. The house that we purchased was uh, a red house, a green roof, gold shag carpet. A yeah. home. Nevertheless, it was in a great, great, great neighborhood. And, uh, me and my military friends, we painted the house, we tore out the carpets, we did a lot of home improvements to that home ourselves. And uh, I invited her back over after we had finished that about a six month process of kind of renovating the property. And she was just amazed at the work that we had done to that property. And I kept that house for many years, approximately 10 years, I had relocated uh, from Washington State to other areas of the country. And uh, uh, it just piqued my interest that it didn't take a lot of money to get started. And when I sold that house, I was amazed how much money I made by selling that property. I wish yeah. I would have sold it now based on what I know now. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. I sold the property, made a lot of money on that property. And uh, it piqued me to go to school to get a real estate license. So Fast forward, I had my real estate license while I was on active duty in the military. Mm. Uh, when I came to uh, Virginia, I went to real estate school, got my license back in 1989. So uh, my goal at that time was to sell one house per month on average, but I ran into another big obstacle. At that mm. time, no one wanted to hire any agents on a part-time basis. But nevertheless, I made it through that process, and that uh, uh, really encouraged me to keep moving forward in real estate, and I'm still in the real estate business right today. Yes, yes that is awesome. Wow. Nice way to start. Get mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. All right, so we'll just go ahead and get into the next question, which is, as a loss mitigator, what strategies have you found most effective in negotiating workout plans and short sales agreements with mortgage companies on behalf of clients based in pre-foreclosure status. Uh, that, what you just mentioned, is that is very dear to my heart in helping homeowners that may be in an adverse situation of losing their home. And in the military, I have been very, very blessed. Uh, I, has, I have had some of the best jobs in the world. I was in aviation, and you know... Um, in aviation, there's a lot of rules, regulations, and guidelines. And when I was relocated or assigned to uh, be stationed in Virginia, uh, I worked in research and development uh, on the Longbow Apache program. And uh, every time I had to go to a meeting, I always had to t take my tech manuals with me in reference to the updates and changes in reference to that helicopter. So. It just dawned on me at that time, if there's anything to do with the government, they have a regulation somewhere. You yeah. just got to find the regulation. Yeah. And loss mitigation is a government program 
in reference to FHA loans, VA loans, and some conventional loans that are bought or, or serviced by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So what I did at that time, I went and found the regulations. I read the regulations. I comprehended the, re the regulations. So that's what gave me the tools and the ammunition to assist homeowners in an adverse situation. And so uh, when I meet a homeowner that's in that situation, I always sit down and try to find out the true facts. What has caused this situation, the adverse situation you are in? Uh, we always talking about on the front end how to help people purchase a home, but you hear a little, uh, uh, you don't hear a lot about information on the back end, how to assist the homeowner. In most yeah. cases, they will tell the homeowner to call their mortgage company and they will help you. Well, I'm here to tell you that may not be true. Yeah. Uh, if that's so true, why are these uh, homeowners losing their home? Now, saying that, Based on what the homeowner tells me, first of all, I got to find out if you have a VA, FHA, or a conventional loan. That's the first thing, because the regulations are different. So once they tell me that, then I line that regulation up with their personal situation, i.e. job loss, medical situations, a divorce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The guideline specifically states how to help that homeowner in that situation. So I always tell the homeowner, do not call your mortgage company unless you know how to communicate with them with true, true facts. That's so important because when you call that uh, uh, mortgage company, they are recording what you have seen. So if you came back, so after you communicate with them and they ask you to send in documentations to verify what you said, and if you can't not back that up, they're not going to help you. So I tell yeah. the homeowner, you are already at an emotional, stressful situation. Let someone call on your behalf to get the true information to them. Because yeah. the, the government don't want your house. They don't want your keys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are you going to be able to uh, maneuver to help yourself? So the house will not go into foreclosure. And that's what yeah. I do on the front end. And wow. the free charge, the free service is free. Wow. Yeah. And that's that's awesome. It sounds like it sounds like the way you broke it down, the way people can understand, it's like you're stepping in and you're you're basically representing them, you know, as like basically like a lawyer. You know, yeah. you wouldn't go into the courtroom and try to represent yourself because you don't know the terminology, you don't know the lingo the way you just broke that down and that's awesome you know yeah. that's that's what i received out of it like you're basically stepping in you know and you're speaking on their behalf because you know the lingo you studied it you know yeah. and that's what you you, you specialize in standing in the gap yes filling in the gaps that's so true uh seth uh in reference to stepping in on their behalf being an advocate for them and uh, i'm like i said i've been very blessed to be in various positions um I was set on a panel many years ago, maybe 15 years ago, with some lawyers right here in Virginia, uh, and um, they was the subject for the audience was loss mitigation, and I, I analyzed, looked at everyone, and I was the only person on the panel that wasn't a lawyer. But yeah. what really got me when they start to talk. I realized how much they didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I started interjecting what I knew in reference to loss mitigation. Mm -hmm. And after that panel uh, discussion we had, I had one lawyer call me. And uh, he said, uh, you know more than I know. I don't know what you know. I do not practice in loss mitigation. And I was kind of shocked but he was very honest mm -hmm. and we are still good mm -hmm. friends today matter of fact yeah. he just called me yesterday on a case <laughs> that uh we was working on to help this family save their home from a foreclosure 
Uh, they did foreclose on the house illegally. The mortgage company did. They advertised, uh, uh, this family lives in Surrey, Virginia. They advertised the homeowner's home in the newspaper in Richmond, Virginia. Did not send her any certified information that the house was going into foreclosure. The lender had the point of contact to communicate with the wife in reference to the home. They foreclosed on the home. Someone knocked at the uh, homeowner's door saying you no longer own the home. I am a representative from HUD and you got to move out. And when she called me with that story, I said, that is totally illegal. Yeah. That is not the way the process goes. So I called the attorney that I have built this relationship with. He did go to court on behalf of the homeowner because it was a evict- they was trying to evict her. The judge stopped everything. Wow. Yes. Because that's it's an right. illegal foreclosure. Mm. And uh, that's the things that I like to do. And that service didn't cost her a penny from me on my end. But that's the thing I like to do to help homeowners. Yeah, I love that story. That's oh, that's man. awesome right there. Powerful. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Definitely take heed, people. Take yes. heed to what this man is he's saying. You know, he has the experience, he's done it. Yes. He's doing it. Wow. All right. Well, let's um let's move on to the next. I think this question right here kind of goes into basically what you what you were just saying. Mm-hmm. But um, how do your core values of honesty, integrity, faith determination and love guide your interactions with clients and colleagues in the real estate industry and how have they co- contributed to your success um well that that's a very good question uh in reference to what i do and it all started back when i was a young teenager i'm from the state of texas uh fort worth texas the pacific i used to work with my grandfather 80 miles east of dallas texas a little small town named Suffer Springs, Texas, if anyone <laughs> knows where they're at. But I used to work with him every summer, and uh, my grandfather uh, cut grass for a living. Uh, my grandparents had 10 children, which my mother is one of the 10. But nevertheless, I thought cutting grass was just cutting grass, but that's not true. I mean, my grandfather was a professional in reference to cutting grass. Your lines had to be straight, 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 straight. And right that right there gave me deter- determination. It instilled that value of the work ethic within me. And my mm-hmm. grandfather said, if we're going to do a job, we're going to do it to the best of our ability for our yep. customers, our clients. And he instilled that into me more than anything in life, my grandparents. So when I joined the military... I did not know or realize I had already been in the military with my grandparents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sternness they had with me. So basically, the military wasn't that hard of an obstacle for me to stay 22 years. I didn't go in the military to stay 22 years. I went in there for three years, wound up doing 22. And my father instilled that integrity in me. Uh, uh, honesty, be honest with people, be upfront with people. If you can help them, you can help them. If you can't, uh, see, can you get some help for them in other ways? And that's what I did. Faith. I always have had a forward outlook on things in life. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but it's my internal faith that gives me the strength and ability to do what I do on a daily basis. Uh, example, yesterday I'm rehabbing a house and something inside of me, my my spirit said, you need to go down to your house and cut the grass. Um, I like to I like to have a personal connection with every house that I'm rehabbing or purchase or whatever I'm doing. So I went down yesterday to cut the grass I'm down there by myself. No one else was there. And as I was cutting the grass in the front yard, guess who rode down the street? Codes and Compliance. <laughs> and uh, she was very nice. And she said, I said, can I help you? She said, well, I was just riding by, uh, just checking the neighborhood, and I see you cutting the grass. So my internal mechanism kicked in. I said, well, you coming down to 
write me up for a violation or whatever she said that's what I was out for looking for violations so wow. thank God yeah. eternal faith kicked in mm-hmm. and I went down I cut the grass and everything was okay and that's what yeah. I try to do with each homeowner that I have a connection with I try to get down to the nitty gritty of my faith level to lead and guide me to help them through the process mm-hmm. and that's that's what I do on a daily basis. And I, I have a wife and four children, and I have problems uh, raising a family just like anyone else. So mm-hmm. I always try to relate to people. And yeah. uh, that's what parents me through on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, that is so awesome. Yep. Yes, it very self-sacrificing. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And it kind of leads into our next question. Um, you may have already answered it. But what have what inspired you to become a certified as a housing counselor and first time home buyer trainer? And how has this certification helped you assist clients with their real estate needs? Uh, I'm a, if I have if I believe in something, I always try to find again the regulations to back up what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And what I do in the real estate profession. There's a lot of real estate agents and professionals in any given city at any given time. But to set yourself apart, I'm a firm believer you need to be certified. If you can believe yeah. in something, you need to take it to the next level for us getting the proper education. Mm-hmm. And when you get the proper education, that sets you apart from everyone else. Mm-hmm. If everyone is going to the right, I go to the left. I search out the opportunities that where other uh, professionals are not focusing on. Yep. It's easy to wake up and say, I want to sell you a house. Anybody can do that that has the license. Mm-hmm. But can you do loss mitigation? Right. See, not only am I certified uh, as a housing counselor, because I used to do the counseling for homeowners or seniors that are getting reverse mortgages. That, that was part of my... <laughs> Uh, uh, profession that I used to do before the Dodd Frank uh, 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 regulation kicked in. As a real estate professional, I can't do that now because of the regulation. Okay, but I'm also certified as a real estate bankruptcy specialist, certified as a real estate short sale specialist. Wow, that puts me in another area of expertise and knowledge. So when I walk in someone's house or they come to my office, they let them know that I'm different. I have read the regulations. I know the regulations. I know about the bankruptcy procedures. I know about the short sale procedures. And that's what I do on a daily basis. And I'm still searching out other opportunities as I go forward in the profession. Like being a hotel certified certified hotel broker specialist. Mm-hmm. How many agents do things of that nature? Mm-hmm. And that's what I yeah. like to do. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thinking that's... outside of the box. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah. yes, outside the box, and it uh, uh, puts me. It puts me in the presence of helping people. Right. Yep. Right. You got to have a passion to do it. You know, you're doing something you love. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really feel like work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. All right. So uh, can you share a memorable experience you've had while working with the client and how you were able to successfully meet their real estate needs? Okay. I'm going to go back to the loss mitigation again. Uh, Okay. That's all right. (laughs) I, I got a lot of uh, memorable experience, but this one right here is very memorable. Uh, I was I was met a young lady, uh, had a huge home, two young children, and her husband was in Iraq. So uh, she fell behind on the mortgage payment, didn't know what to do. So listening to her story, She already had received the letters from the mortgage company that they was going to foreclose on the house. I believe we was, we was less than 60 days from a foreclosure. We was, yeah. So, uh, I had to put on my hat 
and really think and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in reference to what to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came up with a plan. I said, told her, I didn't know if this was going to work or not, but we're going to try it. I took her to AER. AER is the Army Emergency Relief Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an uh, organization with all military branches. So when a home, well, when a, a service member gets in an adverse situation, based on the need, they can provide funds. Okay, it's probably going to be a repayment plan of the funds that was borrowed, but nevertheless, they have the funds or the ability to give that family the money so they can uh, help them in their situation. And basically, AER. Army Emergency Relief Fund, they gave that family the money to bring the mortgage payment current mm -hmm. so the house would not go into foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So that was a plan that I just thought of. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it's not written in any book. Yeah. It worked. Sometimes you have to go and plead the case for the family. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the house still went into foreclosure, not because of what the wife did. It's something that the husband did, and he didn't do it intentionally. Mm -hmm. All his mail was coming to the house while he was in Iraq. Well, he had to come home on emergency leave to try to get this situation resolved, which we did. But in the meantime, he changed his forwarding address for all his mail to go to Iraq. Oh. Mm -hmm. And when you send the mail to overseas to a comeback situation or a hostile environment, the mail just don't arrive the next day. Mm -hmm. So the mortgage company is sending him letters to get everything uh, back on track, going forward. And by the time he was receiving the letters, the house had went back in the foreclosure status. Wow. Oh, so the family lost the house based on him just changing his address sending his mail to Iraq, which mm -hmm. he should have left alone. And mm -hmm. we could have received this, that mail from the lending institution here locally, and we could have sold the house. Yeah. So wow. things like that, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I have the next family, that is something we talk about. Yeah. Keep your address current where you are don't be sending your mail overseas. Right. Yeah, definitely. Family in that situation. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I always try to work. I always try to work out a four-part plan in mm -hmm. reference to helping families. Can we work out a repayment plan? Uh, a repayment plan can be based on if it's a six-month plan. That's a short-term plan. Anything over six months will be a long-term plan. A loan modification. That's on the table in accordance with the regulations. If those two plans don't work out, then I try to tell the family, okay, you both working or one spouse is working. We need income. Can we do a garage sale? Do you have items to sell? Mm -hmm. Can you go drive for Lyft and Uber? Mm -hmm. See, when I started out, it, all, uh, those kind of uh, uh, income situations wasn't around. Right. So it's ways that the family can raise money quickly. Mm -hmm. And if we can get them to raise money quickly, a lot of times we can stall off that foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Next thing is filing bankruptcy. It's an option that the homeowner has, but I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of straightforward and kind of stern when I say things in that arena, because if you cannot make your mortgage payment now, why do you think filing bankruptcy you're going to be able to make the mortgage payment. Mm. Because chapter 13 is a wage earner plan. So you got to start making the current mortgage payment plus what's in the rearage. A chapter 7 is a, a, disp it's a disposition or disposal plan. Mm -hmm. They may ask you to get rid of the assets to pay off wow. the creditors if there's right. equity in the property. But I'm not a bankruptcy attorney, but I like to let you know your options. Right. Yeah, Another yeah. option is if they file bankruptcy, 
you put in a, a stain on your credit going forward for the next seven to 10 years. Mm. So the mm. reality of it is, do we need to dispose of the property so you can start over fresh? Mm-hmm. Or can you can we work out a workout plan? Right. These are some of the options we talk about. And it's up to the homeowner to make the ultimate decision of what they're going to do going forward. But mm-hmm. I like to lay it all on the table mm-hmm. and uh, give them facts. Right. Get facts. Just don't take one person's idea or plan and then you run with it. Because a lot of times when you're in those adverse situations, somebody's ringing the phone, sending you a letter in the mail, or knocking at the door, I can buy your house. Mm-hmm. But everybody don't want to sell the house. Mm-hmm. Every situation don't present itself to get rid of the property. Mm-hmm. I like to go in there and talk to them about their options. Right. Yep. That's wow. what I did. That's, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. All right. So as the president of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers for the Hampton Roads chapter, what were some of your key accomplishments during your tenure and how did you make a positive impact on the local real estate community? I think we already heard some of that. Uh, that right there, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, for, uh, that is an organization I belong to. We are a minority organization, which was started in 1947 out of Tampa, Florida. They have a... Uh, uh, organizations throughout the United States, different chapters. And we have two major meetings throughout the year. We have a midwinter conference and we have a a conference in the summer every year in some state. So um, when I attend those conferences at the national level, we all come together to collaborate, give ideas, insights of what's going on in the real estate community as a whole. Mm. You can pick up some great, great ideas, <coughs> excuse me, at these conferences. That's how I got involved in being a certified housing counselor. Mm. They have a grant from the government to assist mm. in counseling for the homeowners. Wow. That's a national grant that they have that I was part of and that's how I became certified as a housing counselor through the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't stress the importance of that organization because when you new in the real estate business, I understand what working with the local companies, you may not get all the information the way you need to hear it mm-hmm. to be successful and to build a career within the profession because uh, real estate can go in a whole lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have somebody else explaining these different areas uh, that you can get involved with, you can be led astray. And sometimes you're gonna be out of the business uh, real quick. And I try to stress the importance to young agents. You got to get yourself a mentor. Mm-hmm. A mentor. I mean, a, 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 a person. Not reading a book is not a mentor. You got to mm-hmm. get someone that's going to tell you the facts, right. tell you the truth, and keep you focused on what you're trying to do going forward. Mm-hmm. And uh, like in the uh, National Association of Real Estate of Brokers, uh, we had the real estate brokerage uh, division, the management division, the mortgage financing division the appraisal division, the land development division, the home building division. You can take, you can be involved in all of that. Mm-hmm. They looking for young talent. I mean, these are some guys that have been in this organization many, many years, 80 mm-hmm. and 90 plus years of age. Wow. And they like, uh, they love taking young ages, looking in them in the eye to support them, give them advice and uh, talk in reference to what we do at the local level. Because whatever is going on in the government, at these national big mortgage companies, 
the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, we have a seat at the table. Yeah. We at the table. We at the table with the government, with the uh, government officials, your local politicians. We are at the table. Yeah. Because if we are not at the table, our concerns may not be addressed. Right. Yep. And we got to have our voice at the table mm -hmm. to ensure that we are included in the conversation. And yeah. if we He's like, you know exactly what's going on. We know what's going on and we know how to address the issues at the local level to keep things moving forward. Right. And that's what yep. we do. And if wow. anybody's out there listening, whatever city or state you're in, there's a chapter in your state and our city. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Yes. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Make sure you look into it. Yes. Yep. I all know right. we definitely will. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. We're definitely going to sit down a little bit more with you. Keep picking your brain. <laughs> you know, yep, keep dropping the jewels. Yes. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. All right. With your extensive uh, experience in residential, commercial, and international real estate sales, what emerging trends do you see in the industry and how are you adapting to ensure you can continue to meet your clients' needs? That's a huge question. Experience <laughs> in commercial and international real estate and what emerging trends do you see in the, in, in the industry? Well, the indus industry has changed tremendously since I have started in the business. Technology uh, is driving a lot of things we do now mm -hmm. uh, in this profession. Uh, you have a lot of companies now that operate in the cloud. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of your brick and mortar build, buildings or businesses are going by the wayside. That's an old method of doing real estate. Uh, the consumers are busy. They may want to meet you at Starbucks. They may want you to meet them at their office, at their home, at the park, at the movie theater. Mm. It has changed tremendously. Real estate is where the consumer wants to be. Real estate now is global. There's no such thing as boundaries within the United States right now. Uh, mm -hmm. My son is graduating college next month, May. He's going to be getting in the real estate profession. Uh, really don't know if he's going to focus on commercial or residential, more than likely uh, commercial side of things. So mm -hmm. right now, we are putting together a meeting to go to the Bahamas to talk to some developers in the Bahamas. Mm. See what I mean by global? Yes. Real mm -hmm. estate is everywhere now. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's clients overseas want to buy real estate here in the United States. They want to do business in the overseas. So you have to go where the client is located. It's just right. not right here in Virginia, in your backyard. They everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you got to mm -hmm. make your backyard everywhere. That's my outlook on real estate. Now, right. I know yeah. I've been around real estate a long time, but I'm not planning on getting out of real estate no time soon. Yeah, so that's I right. have to adapt to the changes. I'm mm -hmm. not saying I'm a, a whippersnapper with technology, because I'm not. But nevertheless, I got to adapt to keep things moving forward. And I mm -hmm. think if agents can adapt that process of looking at real estate globally, they will be very, very, very successful mm -hmm. going forward. Uh, focus on niche marketing. Mm -hmm. Find a niche, become a subject matter expert within your niche. Mm -hmm. And if you're a subject matter expert in the niche, you're going to receive the calls. Mm -hmm. You have to implement various tools to stay current in the business. You mm -hmm. got to have tools to be proficient in what you do. Uh, you should have tools working for you 24 hours a day. Right. Yeah. I'm just one person right here in Virginia, but someone should know me in the Bahamas, Jamaica, wherever. They should know who I am based on their need. And if, they, and if you can do that, you're going to be very successful. You're going to have to have assistance to handle the workflow of what you're doing. And that's yeah. what I see as an outlook 
on real estate and uh, going forward, um, really get a mentor. And a mentor shouldn't be a person, in my personal opinion, gonna tell you everything is rosy, rosy, nice, mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Because mm -hmm. it's not. Yep. What I do in real estate, everything is not rosy, rosy, nice on a daily basis. But you gotta be focused, you gotta be determined, and you gotta push through. And one thing, yes. other thing I want to say, if you really want to, whatever profession you are in or trying to explore, you got to find if that's really your purpose. Mm. If it's your purpose, you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. The old saying is, it's, your purpose will, will develop a platform all by itself for you. I don't toot my horn. I don't wave, wave the flag of what I do. My profession, it presents itself for me to do whatever I'm doing. Right. Exactly. And if yes. you do that, and if you understand that, and if you understand your niche, you're going to be successful in this business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I just hear uh, the scripture resounding. Your gift will make room for you. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's yes. It. And uh, mm -hmm. um, my son, like I said, he's getting ready to graduate and he wanted to have a, a, a discussion with me and his mom, and we sat down, and we was talking, and uh, he said, Dad, Mom, I want to tell you something. Uh, and he's getting some great job offers, and uh, he said, I don't want to work nine to five. I don't want to work nine to five. And um, my wife wasn't upset, and I wasn't upset, and <laughs> I said, who told you you had to work nine to five? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, he said uh, I just don't feel that. I'm 21 years old. I don't feel that. I think I can be much successful by going out and doing something for myself. Yeah. Exactly. I said, well, son, that's your purpose. That's mm -hmm. your purpose. That's your inner spirit talking to you. Mm -hmm. Go do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't let nobody pigeonhole you into a nine to five job if that's, what, if that's not what you want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't. I didn't send. We didn't send you to college for somebody to tell you what to do from nine to five every day. And I know mm -hmm. that's not for everybody to be out here for themselves. I understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, "I'm not going to do it." Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, don't do it." Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he just he just said there was so much weight off of him. Wow. Yeah. That he spent all this money to send him to college to work for somebody. I said, "Son." I wish I had that mindset at 21 years of age. Yep. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you got a place to lay your head. You got you gonna eat, you know. But I'm telling you, coming to work with me, it's gonna be some good days. Yeah, it's gonna be some good days. <laughs> not lining yes. up, doing what you're supposed to do. I'm the first one to tell you, hey, we got to sit down, have the discussion what you're doing and how you're going to get there and if we can do that you're going to make it now that's my fourth child my third child mm -hmm. worked for me worked with us so i know what he went through he's very mm -hmm. successful still to this day awesome. but he started out working with me and his mom and uh mm -hmm. we are very very appreciated blessed to have our children work in this profession with us two out of the four well, yeah. work with us or have worked mm -hmm. with us are going to work with us and mm -hmm. uh, 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 my wife also she's a broker also but she okay. don't do things like I do at my level but mm -hmm. nevertheless uh, she's in the profession also didn't plan for this to happen that way had nothing to do with it everybody just kind of woke up saying I'm going to get a real estate license too and I said well, you are <laughs> yes but I guess what I'm trying to say you don't realize who's watching you that's yeah. right. You don't realize looking at you, saying they want to do it too. And, yep. uh, that's what we do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. Yep. Thank you so much, Benny. We like I've I've gotten so much from this interview. Like yep. 
so much. Uh, I feel so full. Like I can I can feast off of this for days. Yep, so I, I truly appreciate everything that you share with us. Thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to come and sit down and have a chat with us. Um, I know that this interview is going to inspire, motivate, and help so many people out there. So if people, if they do need to get in contact with you, what is the best way for them to reach you? The best way for them to reach me is on my cell phone. And that number is 757-288-7298. And that's the best way to reach me. I have no time limit when you to call me. If you call me at 10, 1 o'clock in the morning, more than likely, I'm going to pick the phone up. Uh, excuse me. That's how important people are to me. I, I, wow. I, I, if you have a question, you need to call me, call me. Mm-hmm. Okay. If I don't pick up right then and there, I will call you back as soon as I possibly can. And yeah. if I don't pick up, I just forget, which more than likely I want, call me again. Mm-hmm. Just keep calling <laughs> till you reach me. And I will. Yeah get to you with your concerns. Again, Benny Miller, 757-288-7298. Yes. 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 Uh, That's awesome. Reach out, people. Reach Mm -hmm. out. Reach out for your real estate needs. Mm -hmm. You know, if anything he said touched you in a way where, you know, you can use his assistance, you know, he can help you, reach out. Yes. Yes. Thank you guys again so much for tuning into this episode. Um, I would like to just shout out really quickly. It's Creative Hand Beads for making me these wonderful handmade bracelets. Um, Thank you again. We'll be back next time with another episode. Thank you so much, Benny, for joining us today. Yep. Don't forget, I'm Seth. And I'm Lashia. And together, we make the Koya Living R.E.I. Take care, everyone. All right, people. We have a quality conversation with us and now. Yeah, we're having quality conversations with SNL. Having quality conversations with SNL. Having quality conversations with SNL. Yeah, having quality conversations with SNL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, having quality conversations with SNL. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we're having quality conversations with SNL. Having quality conversations with SNL. Yeah. You know we bring.